You are logged on to the Computer Corner Show, now available from both our website at www.compcornr.com and on YouTube for your convenience. I'm your host, Phil Shortell, the lead instructor at Computer Corner in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And with me here today are my co-hosts, Carol and Joe Petronovich, the owners of Computer Corner. Hey, good day to you both. Good day, everyone. Hello. If you're sloppy with snapshots, you've been sold with social engineering, or you're stumped by the start menu, listen to our podcast over the course of time. We will probably have an answer to one or many of your questions. Since people now listen to Computer Corner Show from anywhere in the world and possibly beyond, we want to tell you a little bit about us. Computer Corner is based in Albuquerque, New Mexico, located at 3101 Manal, a few blocks west of Carlisle, directly off I-25, where we have a beautiful showroom. It is beautiful. And that is available to serve our home and business clients. We've been in business since 1983, so we have a fair amount of experience under our belts. 1983 to 2019, that's a fair amount. Uh, it sure 36 is. 36 years. Computer Corner was founded by Carol and Joe, and in addition to our retail store, we have state, local, and federal government contracts. And as our lead instructor, Phil is Computer Corner's software expert. He's been a technology instructor for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, he also knows a great deal about <laughs> hardware, internet security, and a lot more, actually. In 30 years, you better know a lot about these things. Anyway, Carol manages all our government contracts and is the primary salesperson for the state of New Mexico, so she knows a lot about computer specs and products. And Joe is a Microsoft Certified Engineer, or MCSE, and knows more technical information than anyone I know. Oh, That's thank you. That's for sure. <laughs> We're proud to have received many awards for our company, too. We've been one of the top 100 privately owned companies and one of the Flying 40 technology companies in New Mexico for many, many years. Computer Corner has been voted the best local computer experts by Albuquerque the Magazine Reader for several years. The company has even been on the Inc. 500 list of top growing companies in the United States for two years running. So why are we telling you all this? Well, I had a question from someone asking what qualifies us to position ourselves as computer or business experts. Now you know some of our qualifications. <laughs> right. So we have a couple of topics for you today. One dovetails on a previous podcast we had about the end of Windows 7 support, which is actually coming up in January of 2020. I got a lot of questions and a few comments after that podcast, so we want to address a few of those. First of all, when we say the end of Windows 7 support, we don't mean the kind of support when you call Microsoft and ask what's wrong with your computer or how to perform a certain function. What we mean by the end of Windows 7 support is that Microsoft will no longer be providing security updates. And that's problematic because hackers will know this and start targeting Windows 7 users. Indeed they will. Hackers will know that Windows 7 users will be vulnerable. So we suggest either upgrading to Windows 10 or buying a new Windows 10 computer. That's where the next questions come in. Several people ask for more information about what to do when you're buying a new Windows 10 computer. I guess they realize that upgrading their five-year-old computer was not such a good idea. First and foremost, as we've talked about many, many times, you want to be sure to get a good backup of your data. You should be doing that anyway, whether you're buying a new computer or not. That's for sure. Then you need to locate your license keys or your disks for your application software. And when we say application software, it's like your programs, like Word, Excel, Publisher, PowerPoint, QuickBooks. And anything from Adobe and a whole host of others. Right. Next, you want to determine whether or not your software and peripherals, like your printer or scanner, is compatible with Windows 10. To do that, you'll want to go out to that software publisher's website, for instance, Microsoft.com for the Office products like Word and Excel, and Intuit for Quicken or QuickBooks, and check to be sure your version of that software works with Win 10. You want to do the same thing for your printer or scanner by going to the hardware manufacturer's website, such as HP, Epson, etc., to make sure your particular printer, scanner, or whatever is supported for Win 10. Right, and HP.com or Epson.com, etc., for your peripherals like printers or scanners, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. You may have to search a little bit on their different websites, but there will be a compatibility section of some sort. Microsoft calls theirs the Compatibility Center. And to save you some time, I know that Office 2013, Office 2010, and 2007 are compatible with Windows 10. Older versions of Office are not compatible, but might work if you use compatibility mode. 
but you're going to have to lose some of those features. That's yeah. true. Yeah, the I main do. thing we've, we've discovered is if you've got 32-bit Windows operating system, it's probably not going to work with and, Windows 10. Yeah, and if you're using Win, uh, Office 2007, you're 12 years behind the edge now, folks. That's for sure. Okay. Caution here, you've got to be prepared for a learning curve for sure. The latest versions of Office, Office 365 and Office 2019, are quite different than Office 2007. And Windows 10 is obviously different than all the previous versions of Windows, except for 8, mm -hmm. Windows 8. It's similar to that, but better. Nobody talks about that anymore. <laughs> no, they don't. For good reason, I yes. think, too. Of um, course, when you buy your new computer at Computer Corner, we can set up the desktop screen to look like Windows 7, but you'll still have some things that are different. And yes, Office is majorly different. That's where I come in, and I can help you if you're interested. It doesn't matter where you bought your new Windows 10 computer. We have both a two-hour Windows 10 class called Become a Pro at Windows 10, and we also do personal computer tutoring. Up to two people can get this type of training at Computer Corner. We'll even set up your new computer, install your new software, teach you how to use it, and haul away the boxes if you want. Mm -hmm. I guess we don't want this to sound like an infomercial about Computer Corner, but we really are unique in all the different services that we offer. And we have an extremely professional staff to help you. That's for sure. Okay, so you want to back up your data, as we said. You want to check to see if your peripherals and your software are compatible with Windows 10. Well, then what? Well, if you've decided to keep your older software and you've found your license keys or disk, you need to decide if you're going to want to reload your old software yourself or if your computer service provider is going to do this for you. Basically, if you buy on the Internet, having a computer service provider load your software before the computer arrives, well, that's not going to be an option. No. You can either install that, those programs yourself or take your license keys and disks to a service center for them to install it. And if you buy your new computer from a local store, many of them, like Computer Corner, will install your software if you have the license keys and disks. Mm -hmm. If a store offers to install your programs without the office keys or disks, you need to know that that's a federal offense. There's actually a local store that's been sued for copyright infringement by Microsoft but that's a whole different story. Yeah, I think Indeed, we'll leave that is. out for today. <laughs> <laughs> Suffice it to say, we need your license keys or disks at Computer Corner because we don't want to break the law. Yeah, if you decide to load your programs yourself, be prepared for the time it's going to take, which could be considerable. And I can't state this too many times. Be sure to have your license information. It should be pointed out, though, that if you have subscriptions for your software, like for Office 365 or Adobe Creative Suite programs, those license keys should show on your account with Microsoft or Adobe, and therefore that will not be an issue. Oh, good point, Phil. Mm -hmm. So you've got your new computer. You've got your programs loaded. Now you need to decide how you want to access your data. You'll want to decide that actually before you get your new computer, but the actual restoring or accessing of the data, well, that comes next. Mm -hmm. If you've chosen an external hard drive or USB drive, if you've got a small amount of information for your backup, you can just plug it in and access your data. You can basically do a restore or choose to copy your data to a place on your new hard drive to access it. Now, if you have a cloud backup solution only, be prepared for a very long wait to download your data. Mm -hmm. It's only going to be as fast as your download speed, and depending upon how much data you have, it could literally take days. It, indeed it could, and the risk here is that if your Internet goes down during the process, even for a few seconds, something could go wrong, go wrong. But does anybody <laughs> understand the skipping record uh, uh, joke again anymore? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they yeah. do, Phil. So we talked about reloading your programs or upgrading to the latest versions, then restoring your data. The other option is to take the hard drive out of your old computer and install it as a secondary drive in your new computer. Of course, that's not probably going to be feasible with a laptop, mm -hmm. but it could you could possibly do that's that with what a desktop. I that's pretty much what I've done every time I've made a change. That's also assuming that your old hard drive is still in good condition. Indeed. That's an important not, factor. Then it's no point. Right. But if you've got your hard drive out of your computer and plugged in and you can't access it, put your ear down by it. If it's not spinning, it's dead. If mm -hmm. it's clicking, it's gone. Yeah. So at that point in time, the best thing you can do is bring the drive to us 
and we can help you ship it off to a company that can find your data. Maybe. 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 Right. Hopefully they okay, can find and your data. Yeah, you don't need a stethoscope for this. Your ear alone will be able to pick up the sounds of the sound of silence. Sound of right. silence. Or the sound of, of trouble, whichever yep, for way you sure. want to go. The next question we got was about whether the new versions of programs like Word, Excel, etc., should you choose to buy new or can't find your license keys, whether or not they're compatible with your old data files. Yeah, for the most part, the answer is yes. If you buy Office 2019, for instance, you will still be able to open your data files. It's an interesting thing. Microsoft even has hidden away little things, little programs in there to open ancient files. I seriously hope none of you have ancient files out there, though, because it is going to be a bit of a hassle. But once you open these to the new version... Can you then take it to your old computer of one that's possibly still running and read it? That's a, that's a really good question, and it depends on how old the version is and what you do when you next save the file. You know, certainly you can go back to Office 2003 with any version of Office now, going back to the real old ones, but which, frankly, you shouldn't be running. That's no. for sure. Yeah, before that uh, would be certainly a, a different situation. So we hope that this helps further explain the process of buying a new computer and transitioning from Windows 7 to Windows 10. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a bit of a hassle. There's no doubt about that. Yep. Plan ahead. You may want to get rid of old data files and clean up your hard drive a little bit. So get rid of those data files that you don't need to streamline the process. And, of course, if you need help, the team at Computer Corner obviously can help. Yeah, we'd love to do that, too. Hey, that's going to be about it for this week. Please join us again in two weeks when we'll be talking about a whole bunch of different topics to help make your computer lives just a bit easier. If you want to be updated when a new show is posted, you can subscribe to our e-newsletter by going to our website at www.compcorner.com. You'll find the link right there. We hope that you'll thank of Computer Corner for all your hardware, software, service, and training. Until we meet again, mind your bits and bytes. This is Phil. And Carol. And Joe. Wishing you carefree computing. The Computer Corner Show is logging off. Mm -hmm.